Please show me where the engine spur is found on page four of your missile up. He fed them with the finest wheat and satisfied them with honey from the rock. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And be with your spirit. spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of the Virgin all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And the Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to eternal lasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to be of good and good. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us the memorial of your passion, Grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, to live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Melchizedek, king of Salem, was brought out bread and wine. And being a priest of God most high, he blessed Abram with these words. Blessed be Abram by God most high, the creator of heaven and earth. And blessed be God most high, who delivered your foes into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The word of the Lord. Yes, the sponsorial, you are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You, you are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The scepter of your power the Lord will stretch forth from Zion, rule in the midst of your enemies. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Yours is princely power in the day of your birth and holy splendor. Before the day star, like the dew, I have begotten you. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord has sworn and he will not repent. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Please join me for our sequence. Lo, the angels, food is given to the pilgrim who has striven. See the children spread from heaven, which on dogs may not be sent. Truth the ancient types fulfilling, Isaac bound, a victim willing, passed on lamb, his lifeblood spilling, manna to the father sent. Very bright and shepherd tend us, Jesus of your love befriend us. You refresh us, you defend us, your eternal goodness send us, in the land of life to see. You who all things can and know, who on earth such truth bestow, Grant us with your saints the lowest, where the heavenly feast you show, fellow heirs and guests to be. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. Amen. The reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. <clears throat> Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. He said to them, Give them some food yourselves. They replied, Five loaves and two fish are all we have, unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. Now the men there numbered about five thousand. Then he said to his disciples, Have them sit down in groups of about fifty. They did so, and he made them all sit down. Then taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing over them, broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. And then, and when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled twelve wicker baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Good morning. Good morning. May I begin by first wishing to all of our fathers here a very happy Father's Day. Uh, we will remember you in prayers at this Mass, not only you who are living, but we also pray for our fathers who are deceased, uh, for uh, they have all contributed in some way to us who have grown uh, up as we have. So we thank our fathers for that. What I wanted to do today, I know today is the Feast of Corpus Christi, but it's also the third weekend of the month. And normally we would take this time and reflect upon St. Joseph in this year of St. Joseph. And I thought there is an old uh, tradition that I honestly was not familiar with until I read about it. But once I read about it, 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 God, it made so much sense because it applies to fatherhood. And in essence, it could apply to Corpus Christi in the sense of St. Joseph. As he took care of the child Jesus, he is literally taking care of the body of Christ, Corpus Christi, the physical body of which we celebrate today, the Eucharistic body of Christ. All that being said, the tradition that I discovered anew 
it's an older tradition, but for me it was the first time, is the seven sorrows of Saint Joseph. Now, we may be familiar as Catholics more so with the seven sorrows of the Virgin Mary. I know growing up in Louisiana, there was a parish uh, in Welsh, Louisiana, Our Lady Seven Dolors. Dolor is the Latin word which means sorrow or suffering, Our Lady of Seven Sorrows. And so we were familiar with this uh, devotion for years. But when it comes to St. Joseph and his sorrows, they are also equally valid and can teach us a little bit about uh, what fatherhood means in the light of him. So when I wrote the homily and put it together, of which you'll get it in your bulletin, uh, it was three pages long. The, the office ladies shortened it here with their uh, ability to, to modify things to where it came out to roughly two pages. So they were able to take out a page, but it's still relatively long. So uh, I'll leave a lot for you to read on your own and think about on your own after, uh, during the week. But I'll briefly touch on some of the things. Uh, the first of the seven sorrows of St. Joseph concerns the doubt of St. Joseph. That was the doubt that occurred after the angelic dream in which he is informed that his future bride is now pregnant. Think about it this way. God does not come to ask Joseph's permission to become incarnate in the womb of Mary. He comes after Mary has given permission to let Joseph know in this dream that she is with the child. Imagine, uh, as I've said prior, imagine your reaction if you found out your spouse, uh, if you're a man, or if you're a woman, your daughter comes to you and finds out mom, dad, or husband, future husband, I am pregnant and God got me pregnant. There is no way you're going to buy that story. So how must Joseph have felt? after this dream. He could have easily said, oh God, what did I eat last night? But when it comes to the reality of he finds out from her, yes, she affirms she is with child. Something occurs in St. Joseph. There's this doubt. Is this real? Is this really happening? And then he must undergo a sorrow, a suffering, in that he has to stay up at night, if we use that uh, analogy. He has to really think hard. He's got a choice as a good practicing Jewish man. He could choose to marry her and raise the child as his own. He could choose to expose her and then <clears throat> she would be stoned to death. Or he could choose to send her away quietly, divorce her. And in doing so, he would have to listen to all the people around him in the little community. And we know how people talk in little communities. The busybodies. They know everybody's business. And they're free to tell everybody everybody's business. And he would be the victim of that. So he has to really think and pray hard about this decision. It's not something, although sacred scripture gives us the appearance, he immediately jumps in and says, oh great, I'll do it. No, honestly, no. He has to stop and reflect upon this. This is, this is major news. He can't just all of a sudden give himself over to it. He has to stop and think. <coughs> the second concerns 
the birth of Jesus, his sorrow at the time of the birth of Jesus. And this is where fatherhood is so important. We have an image of fatherhood that was alive during the time of Joseph in that the father is the provider. He goes out early in the morning and he goes to work and he works and he provides for his family. Generally, the wife would stay home for many generations. The wife would stay home. She would raise the children. And that was how it was in the time of Joseph. So Joseph would have gone out every morning. He'd have provided for his kids, his family. He'd have come back. He would have fixed the things that needed to be fixed, whether they be mechanical, whether they be something financial. Joseph is the man of the house. And yet, as he's got his pregnant wife in Bethlehem and they're struggling to find a place for her to give birth, imagine the powerlessness of Joseph going door to door, knocking at different places to find room, being turned away again and again and again. That sense of hopelessness. Here I am. I'm the man. I'm the father. I'm supposed to provide. I'm supposed to have the answers. I'm supposed to fix the problems. And I can't. And then the only thing he manages to find is someone says, we have a stable out back where we keep the animals. You can go sleep there. And even in that moment, where he must have felt like a complete and total failure, that he could not provide a decent place. He still has to celebrate the birth of the child with joy, especially when the shepherds arrive, talking about the angelic vision and the Hosanna and the highest. Joseph still has to show joy at that moment. The third sorrow the circumcision of Jesus. It is the first time the child will shed his blood for humanity's sake. Every father, including Joseph, realizes when they see their child bleed for the first time, it's not the last time my child will suffer. When they hear the voice of the crying baby, it's not the last time my child will cry. But the father must ask themselves, will I be there to comfort my child as they grow older? Will I be able to be there, to be that loving father, to encourage them, to see them grow and progress? Will I give a good example of what true manhood is, what true fatherhood is? Joseph had to come to grips with all those questions that you gentlemen, you fathers, have had to ask yourselves over the course of your lifetime. The fourth sorrow, the presentation of the child Jesus in the temple. If you remember the presentation, think of it in relation to the baptism of your firstborn. You bring your child in, as the priest baptizes the child, he looks to your wife and says, a sword of sorrow shall pierce your heart. Is that something that any father and husband wants to hear at the baptism? No, not really. Knowing that your wife is going to suffer greatly in the future, will you be there to help comfort her during those times. What must have been his sorrow to hear those words? We have uh, number five and number six, the flight into Egypt and the return trip from Egypt. Remember, Joseph is guided by angelic dreams. The dreams tell him, Joseph, Herod wants to kill the child. Get up, move immediately. 
take your wife, take your job, take everything you know, saddle it up on a donkey, lead your family in a big move, find a new place to settle, and start over your life. Many of you have done that. Joseph did that in a time when it, it wasn't as frequently as we have here. Now, generally when a person moves, you know that you're moving to a job. Or some have already purchased houses and they already know where they're going to live. Joseph has to go guided by a dream and do all this on the fly with one important exception. God has given to him the care of his divine son. He's literally knowing that if I don't make good, calm, conscious, calculating decisions, if I slip up, I, I've got God as a child right behind me. He doesn't fully understand it, I'm sure, but he understands that there is something special, something divine about this child. And God gives to Joseph that responsibility to take care of his most divine child, to make those good decisions, to be able to provide so that when Joseph goes and he finds a place in Egypt, or when he comes back and finds a place in Nazareth, he has to go to work in the sun, in the rain, in the cold, just to make sure that that child is provided. And that leads us to the last of the seven uh, sorrows of Joseph. If you remember when they lose the child in the temple for three days, I can only imagine it, and I can only imagine because I'm not a parent, but for you who are parents, especially after the uh, the kidnapping and murder of Adam Walsh, if you remember that, that led to America's Most Wanted, uh, the establishment of that. And thank God for that. But it's a so horrible situation. I cannot imagine what a parent goes through to lose their child for three days. And to think about poor Joseph. It's not just him your earthly child, it's your heavenly earthly child, a divine child. And then three, I'm sure, sleepless nights wandering through areas. When you finally find him in the temple, you're tired, you're scared, you're relieved, you're probably a tad bit angry. Let's face it. You're going through all these emotions in the last number of hours. And you find the child and he looks at you and says, Oh, didn't you know I had to be about my father's business? I give it to Joseph. The restraint he had at that moment. I probably wouldn't have been so inclined to not let my emotion come out. Uh, the baby Jesus might have had a, 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 a red bar by the end of the day, but he doesn't do that. He has the calm and the wherewithal to understand. The child is divine but he still is a child. So he has to understand that. And then it hit me. How many fathers have watched their own children, sons and daughters, pull some of the dumbest things imaginable? Say some things that you want to smack your head and go, God, how did that come into my DNA gene pool? 
it had to be adopted. You've had these all, you've all had those moments where you probably want to take your child and give them a smart bottle as well. But you made an excuse. You look past the fact that they're a child and they'll learn, they'll grow. I won't allow my emotion to get the better of me. How many times have fathers done that? How many times have mothers done that? So it gives us a whole new perspective. Now that is briefly a little bit about the seven sorrows of St. Joseph there in more of a thoughtful way, detailed in the homily. Just something for you to think about on Father's Day. But again, let us thank our fathers who did so much for us. Let us pray for them living and deceased this day. May Almighty God be with you. May he bless you. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. spoken and unspoken, joined through the intercession of St. Thomas the Apostle. Let us pray to the Lord. And let us on this day pray for all of our fathers living and deceased. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the repose of the soul of Tony Somersell, for whom this Mass is being offered today. We pray to the Lord. Offering all our prayers to the Father, let us conclude with a prayer of praise and honor of the Blessed Trinity. Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that would become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord Grant your church, O Lord, we pray the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, free is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim commanded us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. As we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all those in powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Was on the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Was on the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the Father of all believers. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the Duke of that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion. He took bread out, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> As the Savior's commandment formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and as we forgive those who trespass against us, and then give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. To await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Who the kingdom of the power and the glory of the earth now and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for us in death. Amen. Peace the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the good of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. You take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Please join me for our communion verse found on page 90. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen. At this time, I ask that you please have a seat, for we have a second collection this weekend, and that collection is for our Archdiocesan Seminarians. Thank you for your generosity. And now let us stand in prayer, a prayer to St. Michael. Holy Michael the Archangel. Praise, protection against storms, hurricanes, and other disasters. Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, your God. Amen. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be the most beautiful heart. Blessed be the Holy Spirit. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be your holy name. Let us be the Lord of the Son of Jesus.